share with your friends, share with your followers. And as we discuss tonight, the importance of standing on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. So we want you to come in, invite your friends, your followers. We are so happy that you're here at Overflow International Life Center, where the oil of his presence is being felt and being poured out in this hour. Hello everyone, hello Facebook family. Welcome to Overflow TV. Overflow TV, we wanna thank you for all those that are joining in from near and far here in the Central Florida area and throughout the country and throughout internationally. So we wanna thank you that you see value in, in tuning in uh, to us to, uh, tonight. My wife and myself, Prophetess Michelle McLean Walters, we've made the transition from Chicago to Orlando to start a gathering in the name of the ministry. It's called Overflow International Life Center and it is short for the Oil Center. The Oil Center. And right now we're in the process of gathering uh, to be able to build our base. And as we know, we're, we're dealing with this entity called uh, Corno, uh, Corona. Coronavirus 19, COVID-19, but that's not stopping us. So we're having to uh, utilize the uh, platforms that the Lord has yet provided for us to be able to still get his word out. So one, we want you to share with your followers before we get started. Let us know where you are, are joining us from. And if you have any questions, please put those on there on the screen. And we're going to have a teaching tonight uh, from the word of God. And we believe that it will enrich you and give you hope, specifically in this time. It also will give you an opportunity to make an evaluation of where you're at with God and what needs to be adjusted. You know, I wanted to... Uh some of the things we're going to be discussing tonight, you know, really, what is God saying? So many people uh, are at a place where they're saying, what is God saying? What does this all mean? And of course, I don't, but we all know in part, we prophesy in part, but one of the major things we really want to uh, in, reiterate tonight is that we must stand firm upon the solid rock who is the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, there are a lot of things that are shifting. There are, are things that are changing, uh, so much uncertainty. But this is the one thing we want to iterate tonight is that God never changes. He is sitting on the throne. He's not moved from his plan. He's not moved from his promise. And even in this season, as we're waiting, as we're waiting in his presence, we want to ask God, what do you want of me? How should we uh, respond to the things that are changing? And how do we capitalize on what you're doing and what you're saying? So tonight, we just want to bring a, a time of empowerment. I do believe this is a season where uh, society has changed. I mean, life as we know it has changed. Or uh, One of the major things we must understand that we are entering into a new normal. And if you have a, if you, anything is inside of you that wants to put the furniture back in place, I want to just admonish you tonight to let it all go, to let go uh, everything that we knew and that we will press in. One of the things I'm understanding is when we say God is doing a new thing, we never uh, press into or really understand if he's doing something new, that means something is passing away. And this is such a season that we must close the door. We must turn the page and really, uh, I want to say, have a blank page like a canvas. This is a season to let God write on your canvas, on your page of your life. Be Let him uh, take you like a paintbrush and dip it in the colors of your life. And let's see what beautiful picture that's going to unfold. Now, when this... Uh test when this test comes to an end the body many people are going to go back to business as usual many people are going to go back to the same norms the same habits good and bad unfortunately the body of christ cannot go back as a whole collectively to some of the things that we were doing because if it, we do that we're bound to repeat this cycle so if someone were put up on the screen Second Chronicles chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through and uh, including number 4. And then we're going to go over to, uh, we're going to go over to Isaiah chapter 40, 31. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and 1 through 4. Okay. And it reads, Now the Spirit of God came upon uh, Azariah, the son of Obed, and he went out to meet Asa. And said to him, 
Hear me, Asa, and all Judah, and all Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel had been without a true God, without a teaching priest, and without the law. But when they, but, but when in their trouble, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and they sought him, and he was found by them. Now, as a believer, we have to understand that we really have a true uh, a wonderful God that has our best interests at heart. Uh, when he created man, when you look at Genesis, he g gave man a head start in his, his life here in this planet that we call Earth. He, he actually segregated a, a place for man called the Garden of Eden and gave him authority, gave him uh, uh, power, and gave him dominion. But most important, he gave him a choice whether to comply with him and keep this utopian society intact. And he also uh, gave a stern warning that if you don't do that, there will be repercussions for your actions. And as we know the story, uh, when he was tempted and uh, he fell and along with Eve, but God, God is a proactive God. God didn't have to react at that time. He's proactive. He knew what was going to happen. So therefore, he tells us in Genesis 3 and 15 that you shall bruise his head, but he uh, crush his head, but he shall bruise his heel. A foreshadow of Jesus Christ coming into the earth for him to give man yet an opportunity to come back to him. But when we look throughout scripture, man has a tendency, to, specifically God people, to be able to, when they get out of danger, so to speak, or get out of trouble, to forget God. To have a tendency to try to say, God, I have it on, on my own now. I can, you can take your hand off the wheel. I have it now. And when we do that, we develop a, a self-reliant spirit. And, it, and it, it creates a void. It creates a vacuum. It creates a space that allows the devil into our lives. And when you look at Ephesians chapter uh, 427, it says, Don't give the devil a foothold into your mind, your thought, or your life. Too many of us in the body of Christ has given too much space to the devil and he's walked into the church of God. And as a result of that, the church of God is not functioning on all its cylinders, so to speak, so that we can be able to be working as a cohesive unit so that we can come together and, and, and take back the kingdoms of this world for the Lord. I think it's important, too. I think you made some uh, very valid points. I think it's important in this hour that we really have to understand the dignity of choice. I really believe uh, one of the things that Satan has done is he's tried to demoralize and really bring man to a place where we don't really understand the power of our choice. We can choose blessings or cursings. We can choose life. We can choose death or life. God really gives us a choice because because he's given all authority unto man. When Jesus, at, when he, before he ascended unto high, uh, 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 back unto the throne, one of the things he said, I give you power. I give you authority. And one of the things I really feel like is happening in this hour, God is allowing us, he's teaching us uh, the power and authority of our choice. If we choose blessings, blessings will come upon the earth because the earth responds to man. Whether you're saved or not, the earth will respond to you but once you're baptized in the kingdom and once you understand not just the gospel of salvation but you understand the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of salvation has been preached so much in the church where we preach the blessings and the benefits but we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom where we're supposed to take over where we we begin to say what comes upon the earth our actions determine what happens on the earth so we got to understand uh, uh, this is an hour where God is recalibrating us. He's causing us to understand our authority as human beings that we have the ability to affect the quality of life upon the earth. Definitely. And what does the devil would have you believe that we have options as believers to uh, have you to think that uh, through demonic suggestions to make, the, make you think that your options that you have, that you have a choice as a Christian to be able to usurp God's authority and to exalt it on the same level. No, God says when he brought us into the kingdom of, uh, of God, kingdom of heaven, to be able to let us understand this is a new environment that we've never been into, been a new kingdom, but you have one authority and my authority rules. 
I give you delegated authority, but I put limits on your authority. I put a, a, a depth on your authority because in the final analysis, you have to be able to run everything by God. That's why he says, all your ways acknowledge me and then I will direct your path. Why does he constantly tell us that? And as he tells us in the word of God, because he does not want us to have any type of mishaps or any type of delays in our Christian walk. When we don't acknowledge God or we try to do things in our own way, we become selfie bullying. We become... Uh, 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 um, rebellious and we, we we think that we know as much as God uh, through our studies through our intellect and then we go to a place of mental ascent and we think that we know everything the Bible says but you can know everything the Bible says but are you going to adhere to the person of the word are you going to hear to adhere to the word he want Jesus says I only do what I see my father do he had all power here, but he only exercised that power when it was needed. But he always gave the honor and and, and, and encouraged back, uh, not to, the honor and the uh, uh, accolades back to God. Too many people in the church today are taking the accolades back to uh, themselves, and they're. You barely hear, uh, rarely hear about Jesus. You barely, rarely hear about the blood of Jesus. You barely hear, uh, rarely hear about the sacrifices of Jesus other than at Easter about what he's done. You barely, rarely hear about the Holy Spirit that has been given to us to be that guide, to be that mentor, to be that, that leading force, that to be empowering force. And, and, and it makes you think that, you know, we have it on our own. And that's a trick from the enemy. And we have to ask ourselves a question. Has the success of the church or the financial rewards of the church, has it lulled us to sleep to allowing us to have mixture in the church, to allowing us to have uh, uh, passive messages that don't really require anyone to make adjustments in their life? So one of the things, the major things I think is important that we, we really get across to you tonight is that if we return to God, God has always said in his word, if you return to me, I will return to you. This is a season while you're quarantined, while we're in the in this place where we it's sort of like shut down. One of the things I really feel is important that we do is number one, we stay under the protection of God. When we're in, we say we're gonna dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We're gonna abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So we want to stay under the protection of God. This is I really believe that we want to submit uh, uh, to the authorities that be. We want to we want to submit and stay under the protection of God. But I also believe that God is recalibrating our focus. Sometimes we can look at so many uh, uh, different things. We can get comfortable and we can get complacent. But this is such a season. I wanted to uh, read this scripture to you. Psalms 119, uh, 36 through 37. It says, turn my heart toward your statutes, O God. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things. I I really believe that God is putting a new value on the kingdom, that he's putting a new level of dignity, and we're turning our eyes away from looking at worthless things. We're all right now in a place of circumcision where he's cutting away uh, the flesh. He's cutting away things that is not going to be viable for the next season because once we emerge uh, from this place, once we emerge, because I do believe God is going to suddenly uh, shut down, that God is causing the people of God to lift up their voice in intercession and in lifting up their voice to really uh, hear his heart and really cry out for mercy and turning us to what's very valuable and what should be valuable uh, to kingdom-minded believers, which is to advance the kingdom of God, not our personal agendas, not our brand, but to really advance uh, the kingdom of God. So God is turning our eyes, and this is what I want to say. I even hear God saying that even th though the doors of the church may be closed, the natural building, he said the hearts of men are open. So these are days I believe he's really opening up the hearts of men. He's getting our attention where the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. I believe as we, once we emerge from this place, that there's going to be the greatest preachers that's going to be released. There's going to be the greatest uh, time to, to move in miracles, but it's not to build your kingdom or not to go out and build your 
your brand so it can God wants to bring in the harvest so I believe that the um there's such a new grace a new season where we have got to turn to God and he's going to give you instructions you're going to see instructions released like never before he's going to begin to cause just a new prophetic grace to a to a rest upon you where you're going to hear things but if you're not turned from him as my husband said if you not allow God to remove the mixture first from your life remove the confusion the spirit of Babylon uh, a Babylon means confusion by mixture some of us we have too much mixture as my husband said too many options or we want to live our truth but this is such a season where you cannot say I want to live my truth I want to know the truth and the truth is a person and his name is Jesus definitely in this time of isolation and quarantine it's also a time of testing because remember tests reveal our character trials reveal God's omniscience when notice when you look in the Bible and you see uh, saw the uh, the Israelites were at the Red uh, at, at the Red Sea there and you have Pharaoh and his army coming down and, and and their back is against the wall and the people are wondering what we're going to do and God tells them to stretch out your rod and the sea opens up so when they believed God at that time it was a time for God to do something tremendous and supernatural and he did this is also a time for us to be able to examine our character because in times of testing it uncovers who we really are. Mm -hmm. It uncovers who we really are and reveals to the earth, reveals to the people in our sphere who we really are and how we handle crisis. Specifically, we're talking about the church. Now, we're not talking about non-believers. Now, we have to ask ourselves a question. When we pull back, the, when God pulls back the covers of our faith, do we see ourselves as a flight risk that we're able to run away from the promises of God the truth that he says in his word, the truth, the person of Jesus versus a truth that some mad made cliche that's happening here in the 21st century. Do we see ourselves running away from the principle, from principles of Christianity or do we stand firm on the solid rock of Jesus Christ? And the Lord, he's our biggest chili. He wants us to stand firm, mm -hmm. but it's our choice. Remember, it's our choice whether to be a flight risk or whether to stand firm. Now, Christians must understand. I would like sure, to jump right uh, there. Right there where he talks about uh, standing firm, and, and you, you begin to mention how God is turning a light. This is, I really uh, want you to understand, this is a scripture he gave me out of Job 2, 12 through 13. It says, even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart. Return, return to me. God really wants us to do self-examination because it's easy to say, well, this happened because of that. Or, you know, it's easy to, to point the finger or to listen to what, el what someone else is saying. But I believe we're in an hour where God is beginning to, he began to show me levels and he's beginning to put people in rank and order. So God, so everybody knows their rank. Everybody knows their order. No longer are we going to steal messages from one another, but people are going to be living epistles read upon by men. God is beginning to really, as we turn ourselves to him, the scripture says, uh, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with weeping and fasting and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garment. Rend your heart. Rend means to violently tear open or rent, to violently move yourself away from things that's going to hinder the call of God on your life, that's going to hinder the move movement of God in your life and just things that are not uh, advancing the kingdom of God. And this is a season where God's going to show you. I really saw the finger of God being released in the earth where he's going to put his finger on things in your life that you cannot take with you in the new season. He said, we're in your hearts and not your garment, not the outer appearance, but he is looking for uh, the true nature of Christ being formed in you. Even as Apostle Paul said, he says, I'm determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. I believe he's taken the body of Christ back to that place. He says, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious, he is compassionate, he's slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending, sending calamity. So what I want you to understand is as we lift up our voice and return to God, I believe his great compassion is going to be released, He's gonna, his anger is going to be stopped, and I also believe 
believe he's going to relent from letting this uh, from this calamity being released. Now we have to remember it takes more composure to be able to stand for the word of God mm -hmm. than to become a flight risk. The easiest thing to do is run away in your faith mm -hmm. and turn to other vices. Turn to listening to man-made solutions for the problem. Turn to listening to other gods, to mediums, to psychics, versus to stand uh, when things are uncomfortable, versus to stands when the tempest of life is, uh, it seems to be out of control, uh, uh, to stand where it seems like things are getting worse, to stand where we know more statistics about the negative then we know more truths about the positive. Mm -hmm. Like today, they, they mentioned on, on, on one of the outlets that we, the United States, that is, uh, passed over 100,000 people being in, uh, uh, infected by this virus. We understand, but we also understand that God understands as well. And he understands that when the appropriate time comes, because he tells us in his word in, in, in Ecclesiastes, there's a time and season for everything under the sun. And there's also a time for him, as my wife said, of relenting or bringing restoration. But he also want to bring renewal. He also wants to bring a relighting of the fire. Mm. He also wants to bring a, a, a realigning of priority. He also wants to be able to bring people that can go into the seven mountains of society yes. and affect change, specifically in Hollywood, to be able to bring down certain images that we ingest as entertainment, but they're leaving subliminal messages in our spirit that brings us to a state of confusion and a state of wondering, that is that another option? When we see the rise of demonic movies and horror movies, that's, that's letting you know that what we see in the natural is something happening in the spirit. We need to be able to bring that down so that we can be able to, God is not giving us the talent of acting and, and creating different things to bring about horror as an entertainment. He wants us to be able to, yes, use them, but to, nothing that's going to allow us to play with devil, or to play with uh, Satan. I had a pastor years ago, he said, if you flirt with the devil long enough, he'll kiss you and you're going to like him. What does that mean? Before you know it, what you think is harmless in the beginning, it will take a hold of you and start consuming you. And before you know it, the way that you, can, uh, the way that you think, the way that uh, you rationalize everything starts going further and further away from the principles of God. Then you start creating or embracing new age thinking and, and, and thinking that's uh, erroneous or wrong to the word of God. Now, crisis situation does not discriminate. It attacks every system that we rely on ahead of God for fun, security, peace, and financial security, arts and entertainment. Now, any crisis should produce a genuine humility. Is it producing humility in you? Or are you just engrossed? with the various television programs and buying your time. If that's the case, then the Lord will allow this to tarry even longer. He wants his church to be able to maximize this time that they that he's uh, 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 slow down and, and shut down everything else so that we can spend more quality time with God. Too many of us, God has to almost put in a, a schedule to be able to spend time with him because our commitments to the things of the world pull us in so many different directions and then when it comes to spending quality time with God, it's not adequate enough. It's not adequate enough. We're spending more time at the job. We're spending more time in leisure time. We're spending more time trying to ascend to different heights. But what about time with God? What about building ourselves up in our most holy place? What about what God is wanting to tell us and how to be able to eradicate and, and, and excavate everything that is not of God in our spirit? Amen. So this is th this is some important things I feel like uh, we need to be aware of. I do believe what's getting ready to happen is there's going to be a global awakening. They're actually, we're in it right now. God is awakening uh, the human heart to what he wants to happen in the earth. But he also began to talk to me about a new standard of holiness. We're going to begin to see just a new standard, not just a lot of legalism, not a politically correct spirit, but holiness is moving in the fullness in the wholeness of God. God is breaking down a, a political spirit. He's breaking down a religious spirit, but we're going to begin to do things right and out of righteousness. He really is getting ready to cause us to move into a new place of purity, purity in our morality. And even he began to talk to me about restoring families. God really wants to restore your family. He's getting ready to really bring uh, salvation back uh, uh, unto our families. He's going to heal 
our families, deliver our families, and, and begin to break a lot of generational curses. He also began to say to me, uh, this is going to be such a season uh, where the church must give more, uh, give extravagantly to bring it in the harvest. I really believe this is going to be the hour of the evangelist that the, as I said before, the church doors are cl may be closed, but the hearts of men are open and God is ready to bring in the greatest harvest we ever seen. And it's going to be done with fiery love. He's going to begin to baptize our hearts uh, uh, in his fire. And I really believe that the, the preachers are going to arise, but they're going to be apostolic preachers. And when I say apostolic preachers, I mean preachers that are going to preach the word with power. That's going to bring conviction. And you're going to see miracle signs and wonders uh, uh, be released like we've never known it before. But he also said that he was going to perfect the saints for the work of ministry. You're going to begin to see a saints moving in power. It's not going to be the one man show, the one man just the set pastor. But no, God wants to raise up apostolic teams in a greater dimension. You're going to begin to see uh, uh, the different generations work together. He also began to tell me that he was going to raise up cities of refuge. Even though I, I was saying, Lord, why is everybody flocking to Florida? Why is everybody uh, uh, coming? He said, because I'm going to raise up Orlando as a city of refuge, a city of refuge in a pocket of mercy, where you're going to begin to see people come and they're going to get healed. They're going to get delivered and set free. That's one of the reasons why he's raising up such a standard here. Uh, there's so many new ministries and so much worship that's coming for so many worship leaders or those that were known as worship leaders. God began to, to cause them to build churches. So I believe God is raising up churches and you're going to see places of refuge where his power is going to be released and we're going to see Revelation 22 and 17 where the spirit and the bride say come. We're going to be in a great agreement with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, saints, this is a season to be filled with the Spirit, to begin to pray. And as my husband said, be, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you pray in the Holy Ghost, he's going to begin to give you wisdom. He's going to give you insight. And then he began to say, stand boldly in the faith. He said, and say what God is telling you to say. There is coming such a new level of boldness where we're going to be bold and courageous. I believe one of the things we've seen in the body of Christ is preachers that have cowered uh, uh, to man, have cowered to a political spirit, coward. Now, I'm not judging anyone because I don't know what it takes if you take a Joe Osteen, what it takes to run such a mega a church that's big as a stadium, or even just a small man who only may have a hundred people. I don't, I don't know what it takes to build that, but what I am saying, there is grace that's coming to stand on the word of God. And God said, that's what I'm watching over. I'm going to watch over my word. I'm going to watch over my word. And that's when I'm going to perform miracles. I believe we're going to be the greater works generation. The one who is going to move in power. That's going to move in demonstration. That's going to bring glory. That where the name of Jesus will be made famous once again. No longer will you look at churches and you'll look at, you don't even know who are they preaching or what are they preaching. It's so much sensationalism. So many gimmicks. But I believe the name of Jesus is going to be preached and heard and made famous again in the earth. Definitely, definitely. And before that happens, God wants us to definitely be able to consider the decisions that we have been making with our lives. The decisions that affect our individual lives, our family, our corporate lives. Those decisions that possibly take us out of uh, the realm of God's best. Does it reveal that you put other things ahead of God? Has it revealed that you created idols in your life? Now, I'm not talking about worshiping down to a statue, but anything that you put ahead of God, your marriage, your children, your job, oh, the, the, the way you think about yourself, your resources, your assets, have they become something more important than God? If it is, then we need to be able to uh, make the a proper adjustments so that we don't we, uh, create these demonic uh, fruit loops of these cycles and bring us back into a place of bondage. Now, some of us in, in the body of Christ are always wondering, why is God delaying or what seems to be delayed as people die? But Isaiah tells us that his ways are not our ways. Uh, for your thoughts are not uh, your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. All delays, we have to also understand, are not God. Some We do have an adversary that's in the earth realm. 
and he, he he's he's banking on believers continue to live in dysfunctional states. He's banking on you still not being able to cry out to God. He's banking on you not to be able to spend any time with God. He's banking on you to be able to point the blame at everybody except wondering what they're doing with their individual lives. Understand this here. Delay God also understand delays deep in the understanding of his sovereignty. But it also uh, 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 develops our maturity and our strength so that when he does bring us out, we're able to go through more and understand that we're stronger and he's developing us. He's pruning away the unproductive areas in our lives that have to be pruned away. Just like with any fruit tree, if you want that fruit tree to bear more fruit, you have to prune it back. And to be honest, a lot of us in the body of Christ have done what God says, but then again, there's a percentage that have not. So God wants to prune away the unproductive areas in our lives and so that we can bear more fruit because when we look at the world, we need to be able to see that the kingdoms of God are now, the kingdoms of the world are now becoming the kingdom of God. God, a year from now, when this is over, there's nothing more sad than if we go back to that state that we were prior to God, where we were a compromising country, where we were a compromising people, where anything goes. No, a year from now, when we have millions of more people, not just saved to go to heaven, but to be able to be influencers here in the earth realm, where they're able to be able to pull men out of places of darkness, to be able to break transgenerational curses, to be able to raise their family the way that God says raise their family, to be able to influence politicians, to be able to stop making hollow promises and turn to the law, turn to the word of God as a way of how to govern a country. When that happens, then a sweet smelling aroma can happen. Then the United States can be the really influencer of the world, not just through technology, but through the holiness and through the power and it opens up portals in heaven allowing the Holy Spirit to be the God, a third person in the Trinity, in the earth realm. Now remember, he's our help. He's our leading force. We can't go out for in our own strength, it's only when he empowers us. Yes. He can't empower us if we have a made up mind that we still want to yet be in the world, yet be compromising, yet have mixture. So God is really depending on us to be the church in this season. Amen. I really believe that is so important that we really understand we got to get back to the basics. Sometimes in our efforts to, to, to win people or to, to gain approval of men, I believe uh, we have lost the potency of the gospel. I, I just was, as I was sitting here, uh, God just quickened the scripture to me. It's, we know, so many people know it, but I believe we can stand on it. In uh, John 3, uh, 16, John 3, 16, John 3, uh, 15, it says that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe it's going to come such a time that we understand it was it's never the will of God for man to perish. He loves us. He loves mankind. This does does not bring God any glory. Uh, people dying, a thousand falling at our side and 10,000 at our right hand. And as we so uh, proudly say, it shall not come, not us. But we've got to understand that people are really dying by the thousands and it does not bring God any uh, pleasure. I believe what God is doing in this hour that he's really raising up the church to move back to her core identity. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer prayer, not just a house of preaching or prophesying, but a house of prayer for all nations. It is time for us. I am excited that people are praying everywhere. We are doing what God said. He said in the time of calamity, call a solemn assembly. Let the preach weep between the porch and the altar. And I believe that's what the saints of God's doing, but it has to be a lifestyle. I believe God is releasing the spirit of prayer and we're 
you're learning how to pray effectual fervent prayers we are the way God governs the earth is he begins to partner with man and we begin to decree the word of God we begin to declare the word of God we have to understand it's not just about power yes we want to have the power of the Holy Ghost but we want to know the difference with authority when we saw Jesus walk on the water it was not just his power it was his authority over the elements one of the things I want to leave you with tonight is that you have authority you have authority to bind and loose when you begin to align your life with the holiness of God when you get in the will of God you have authority to speak to the winds we're not just prophesying to the winds just so we can have a locust removed no we prophesy and declare we understand that God has given us authority and we are just like him in the earth I want you to be empowered to stand on what the word of God says learn how to pray the scripture because that's what God is walk is watching over so when you stand firm and you begin to declare because you are a king it says Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God and we shall reign on the earth you have authority you can speak I want you to understand three things this is like um he began to show me um uh, uh, like a what would I call it I this is the thing we have to understand about what's happening. Number one, you have the rage of Satan. Satan hates mankind. He knows that his time is short. He knows uh, that, that he, he really seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. God told us that the, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. But the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So you better know and understand that coronavirus, this corona spirit, it is, it is a demonic spirit that God has already given you authority in it by his name and through his blood to bind and to loose and to stop. Number two, we have the sin of men. There, mankind without God, without the Holy Ghost, without Jesus is wicked to its core. The flesh, Jesus says the flesh, the heart of men is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I do believe that this is something that's come from something that man has created. They, many uh, prophets have been prophesying about the dragon from the east. I do believe wicked government, some type of way has, has released some type of warfare in the earth and we have to bind and loose and pray Job's 5 and 12 where it says the wickedness, the craftiness of men will be uncovered God will frustrate the, the crafty the device of the crafty so their hands cannot perform his enterprise and then number 3, know that God has a plan, so you got the rage of Satan, you got the sin of men but know that God has a plan to turn the hearts, he knows just how to turn the temple Temperature. He knows just what to do to get us to fall on our face, to get his will in the earth. So I am telling you, beloved, it is time to rise up in your authority, to understand who you are, and don't be dismayed. Fear not and be not dismayed. Dismay means to be de de demoralized. Don't get over in ungodly things. As my husband has been talking about walking out in pure holiness and doing what God has designed you to do, and don't be dispirited. It's when the enemy comes to steal your joy lift up your voice and praise him this is such a season where we got the high praises of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand to execute the judgment that's written lift up your voice unto God and declare what thus said the Lord put your praise and worship music on begin to create an atmosphere fear where God can be enthroned it says God is enthroned on the praises of men so we wanted to give you some tools some encouragement encouragement tonight so you'll know what to do and how to respond in this type of crisis I'm telling you this is the finest hour to be alive I believe some of the greatest preachers are gonna arise out of this place God is letting out his net and he's bringing in the harvest yes yes so as we bring this uh, Facebook live uh, to a close uh, we want to just go back uh, just to recap when we started there in second chronicles Chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, we see Amasa and the word of the Lord coming to him, declaring to him, as long as you stay committed to him, uh, that God was going to stay committed to us. But we also see in Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 24, 26, and 29, that God gave uh, man over to their desires. But right now, this is an opportunity to come back to the Lord. This is an opportunity to recalibrate. This is an opportunity to learn from our wicked ways. 
Yes, people are dying. We cannot have the attitude that if it's not affecting me, Come on. Is, I'm oblivious to it. No, Come we, we should not care. We should care that if any man is perishing. So therefore, our hearts meet to be a justice. Our, when you ask God to create in us a clean heart and the right spirit, yes. the right spirit to be cared by every human being in this earth. We want to, don't want to see anyone fall by the wayside. Also, and uh, this is an opportunity to be able to understand as Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, tells you to let us not become weary in doing good for in the proper time we will reap the harvest, the harvest of having a steadfast face, the harvest of being stay, uh, uh, consistent with God. Now, while we're waiting, there's two approaches. We can wait passively, waiting for something to happen, or we can wait actively. Well, where the house is filled of worship, the house is filled of praise, the house is filled of uh, declarations and believing and believing and believing that in the appropriate time, this is going to raise. Now, they're thanking every person uh, uh, that has any type of authority in the earth realm on television, but they're not thanking God. That time will come. That time will come. So we have to thank God in advance of what he's doing. We have to ask God to allow us and how to align ourselves. And for those of you that do not belong to a Bible teaching, Bible, uh, uh, Holy Ghost filled church, ask God where to align yourself when this uh, uh, pestilence is uh, lifted. Because we just can't go back on our, I'm going to read my Bible on my, own, on my own. This is no, do not forsake the assemblies of the saints. So therefore, get connected. Get connected. Get into a place where you can be developed. Get into a place where God can speak to you through the man or woman of God. Get into a place where you can become useful Come as on. useful. Everybody has a part to play. We are interdependent upon one another, reaching the world, yes. reaching the world. Yes. So on behalf of my wife and the Overflow International Life okay. Center, we want to thank you for joining us. But before we leave, we'd like to leave you with a prayer. Go ahead. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for tonight. Lord, I thank you that you are doing a, uh, a phenomenal work. You are revealing yourself. God, we give you glory. We are thankful that you are him who sits on the throne, that you are the one that's governing the earth, and you are our heavenly Father. Father, I pray for those that are listening tonight. Father God, where they felt like things are shifting and shaking, and they don't understand what where their life is going to be or what's going to happen in their life. Father, I decree a new level of faith. I release the gift of faith. I pray, Father, that you would cause us to have faith in you, that we would have faith in what who you are, and we would have our confidence. You said in your word, this is the confidence that we can have, that if we ask anything according to your word or your will, you hear us, and if you hear us, we have our petition. Lord, we thank you that you are a strategic God, that you go before us. You make every crooked place straight and every rough place smooth, and I pray for those that are listening to us tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give them dreams and visions. Lord, you said in this season, you're pouring out your spirit. Father, I pray that you would give them dreams and visions and insight. Father, give them, I even hear Jeremiah 33 and 3, that God will reveal to you. God, he will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I pray, God, that in this season, that you will reveal secrets and mysteries. God, give them ideas and concepts. Father, I pray tonight that you would cause people to move under a new grace of revelation. Lord, I pray, God, that you would even cause them to arise to a new place of authority, that they would know you as Emmanuel. God is with us. God, release strength. I rebuke the spirit of fear. For God, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Father, I decree now that in this season you will bring unity in their homes. For you said how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Father, make us one. I pray, Lord God, that every person listen to us, God, that you will provide for them. Lord, I take authority over spirits of lack and scarcity. God, I even decree the spirit of multiplication. I decree that the saints will capitalize. They will capitalize in this hour, Lord God, and God, that you will cause every home to be provided for, Lord God. I take authority over every spirit of lack, job, layoff, but I pray 
pray for favor. I release the favor of God over everyone listening that you will have favor with God and favor with man. I decree, oh God, I just keep hearing the Lord said he's breaking the spirit of poverty. He's breaking the spirit of lack. God, I pray for a fresh anointing to prosper. For Father, you are causing us to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. And I just decree overflow. God, we decree an overflow. We decree and overflow. Overflow is our portion. Yes. Overflow is our portion. But God wants us holy. He wants us whole. And he wants us with a fire inside of us, knowing that nothing can distract us and pull us away from him. So for those that have joined tonight, by all means, please stay tuned to More Overflow TV. And we thank you for those that have uh, saw value in what we're doing here in the Central Florida area. Remember, the best is yet to come. Choose to look at the news, but to choose to be able to embrace the truths of God's word. Pray for those that have went on back to glory and believe that the best is yet to go. Put the blood of Jesus uh, over the, the doorposts of your heart and, and your mind and believe that you're covered. But you're not there hiding away. You're there maximizing. So when you do come out, you will come out like they did in the, in the day of Pentecost. And we're having our yes. own personal Pentecost with not just power, but with authority and assurance knowing that who is our real God. So until the next time, Pastor Floyd and Prophet Michelle says that God loves you and he has more in store for you. And it's called Overflow. Amen.